Betty. Oh, there we go. I think I have to press that one. On your phone, yes. On my computer. Oh, yeah. and my phone, huh? Yeah. Wow, we yeah. have all these little checks and balances here with Zoom. <laughs> We're not allowed in unless we kind of say, hey, it's really me, I guess. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Hi guys. It is Melanie Albert here. I am so excited to be here. We are right at the top of the hour. It's day three. Hey, Sally. Welcome. Hey, Caroline. Welcome to you. I'm loving seeing you guys come in. Betty, good to see you again. I know we have our football game today. It was so awesome to see you here yesterday. Andrea, I don't see you yet. Your picture's not. There you are. Oh my gosh. There you are. Yay. I get to see you. Yay. 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 And you're in Phoenix. We're going to have to get together. So Seriously, guys, I am so I am so excited. I wasn't going to tell you all this, but I was so excited. I was literally working on this until two o'clock in the morning last night when I realized it was two o'clock in the morning, and I went, "Oh my gosh, I think I better go to sleep. I might get about four hours of sleep." But it's because I am like so passionate. If this is all I could do every day that's what I'd be doing. Like literally, I have so much fun, whether it's working behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. I love playing with food. Like I love playing it with food. And it's funny. I've said that to my parents before and I'll say, you know what? I love playing with food. And they'll go, yeah, we know that. It's like, yeah, we know that. It's like, I don't have to tell them that. But seriously, I was having so much fun. I just couldn't stop working. Sally, I know you sent me a note last night um, about, can you toast nuts and seeds? And it was like midnight my time and I'm going, I'm not going to answer Sally because then she'll know I'm awake and we'll get in a conversation. So I had to keep going. <laughs> but anyway, it's day three of skip the meal dinner party challenge where you're going to create beautiful appetizers with what your local farmers are growing or whatever you have locally at this point in time. Before we get started, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I am going to recap day one and day two. I'm going to talk to you about food art phases. And then I'm going to tell you what we have next. Ooh, I don't want to drop my olive oil. What's coming out next. And then we're going to do our green goddess salad. So before we start any ahas, and then if you have questions, put your questions in the chat with a cue and we'll make sure we get to them. Um, so yeah, any ahas, anything that you've learned, anything that you've tried that's different from you. I kind of really want to pulse to see where you are right now. You can shout this out. Let's let's just have, we don't, you don't have to chat it. You can do both, do both. We'll capture it in the chat and we'll also share. But anybody have an aha uh, I that do. you have? I have an aha and I know I'm the tech guy behind the scenes, but uh, I actually stopped by my by my farmer's um, market uh, yesterday evening on the way and uh, bought some fresh veggies. And they even asked me, what are you going to do with this? And I'm like, I don't know yet, but I'm going to figure out something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just buying like random intuitive, intuitive cooking without a recipe. <laughs> I, I was buying random st stuff that looked bright. <laughs> so anyways, I, I had some fun and um, yeah, thank you. Hey, Bez, take a photo and share it in the Facebook group. That would be awesome. You know, I just, I love seeing what's growing in different parts of the country and different parts of the world. I know you're on East coast. I'm on West coast. I don't even know what's growing over there where you are right now. Oh, I think you're man. in Georgia somewhere, right? Yes. Um, surprisingly a lot of serrano jalapenos uh like a lot of bell peppers and and then i uh, what is an october bean i it was really colorful and i was like oh, what take what a do picture I do? and we'll check it out take a picture i, I will and have to go get a picture <laughs> okay oh caroline show us what you have Des, can you highlight yes. caroline so we can see on the big screen what she's showing us I can't totally tell. I think I can tell, but I, you're still little on my screen. I don't know if that's going to work. So tell us what it is and tell us about it. And if you get it locally. So it's a dragon fruit and Southern California is the Mecca to grow dragon fruits in the United States. And so they're mainly Hawaii, Florida and California. And uh, so I have over 150 dragon fruits plant and this is my biggest ever dragon fruit at 1.9 pounds. You are growing those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll have yeah. to come to California and play with them. The first time I had those was in Hong Kong and I didn't know what it was. I'm going, it looks like ice cream on the inside. 
So you have white, pink, uh, purple, and red flesh. Wow. And you, you have about hundreds of different types, and they're going to taste a little bit like watermelon, lychee, uh, kiwi, strawberry, sherbet, like those ones, whenever they're really pollinated with certain pollen, it's like strawberry sherbet. They're amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, if you can s slice it open and take some photos and share with yes. us and maybe share what you're doing with it. Not necessarily right this minute, but in the Facebook group, that would be awesome. If you want to do it now, that's fine too. Anybody else have any shopping adventures or any ahas or anything that you did differently this week? Beetroot. I look for beetroot in the, that's Adrian health nuts. When I was shopping in my organic food store this morning and I did not find it, but I am undaunted. The beetroot powder, the beet powder. Yes. yes. And they didn't have it. Well, I didn't have a lot of time to look because I was coming back here to be with you. So Yay. sometimes they put it more in the supplement section of the natural stores instead okay. of the food section. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to find. So maybe, maybe check there. Like sometimes they actually have like maca powder and even turmeric sometimes, and then the beetroot kind of in that little, almost between the food and the supplement area, check there and let me know. Good. I know you can find it in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anybody else? And then we'll get started. Oh my goodness. All right. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, I'm so happy to be here. Sharing with you has got me extra motivated about going shopping at the local farmers as well, because I'm not just doing it for myself, I'm doing it to share with you all. So little teeny recap on what we've done this week. We started on day one with the food and you know, it really is, it's about the beauty of food, but it's really about eating local, eating seasonal, eating what our local farmers are growing, eating organic and enjoying the colors and the beauty of food. And then we had talked about, and I, like I said, I'm going to remember this, I, the visual all the time now and the kind of the humor with it. We have the veggies, we have the fruit, we have the whole grains, we have the beans, we have the nuts and seeds, and we have the chocolate. I have the, cho I need to take a picture of that chocolate. I was actually going to eat some and show you guys what it really looks like. So those are our six basic food groups for Melanie here, here with plant-based cooking. And then yesterday we talked about culinary in kind of a different way. And mm -hmm. I think the real point about culinary, culinary or cooking, whichever way you want to call it, I like to call it culinary, is that we can cook the same veggies many, many different ways. Like we have so many different veggies that we can choose from and we can cook them so many different ways that they're going to taste different. And it just gives us so many options. I know, and I think I heard this on the first day, so many of us, not that so many of us said it here, but so many people that are plant-based, they go, I go to the market or I go to the grocery store, I buy the same thing over all the time, I cook it the same way and I'm bored. Mm -hmm. So with this way, if you have lots of different things to choose from, and you go to the, you know, these different ways of cooking, whether it's raw, steamed, sauteed, roasted, dry, moist roasted, dry roasted or grilled, you have options. So that was the point about that. The other thing that we talked a little bit about, and I think this is really important, is that when you kind of get into the rhythm of cooking, things a few basic ways. Like yesterday we did the hummus and we had like a foundational recipe, a formula for the hummus. We had a formula for the pesto. So now, you know, and I can, I can teach this more, but <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out, but yeah, we have the basic hummus and then we added the beet powder. So that was different. We had the pesto and then we were asking about, well, what about other kinds of nuts and seeds with the pesto? And the pine nuts, why don't you use the pine nuts? Well, you can do, use the pine nuts. I just didn't think about it, right? So you have the pesto, for instance, you could use any herb, you could use any nut or seed, you put in your oil, maybe you have some vinegar, you have some salt and you have some citrus and there's a pesto with whatever you have. That's intuitive cooking and that's cooking without a recipe. I know that was a mouthful, but that's what it is. So today, what I wanted to talk with you and I have some notes because I wanna make sure I cover all of this with you is I was thinking about the process with food art and kind of the journey that I went through. So I did, I learned about the food. I learned about the cooking, the culinary, and then I started making beautiful food and I practice it every day. <laughs> like it could be, and I think some of, you know, it could be 11 o'clock so at night. So and if I like the other night I fixed something, it was quite late. 
I think it was like a some kind of squash with roasted veg. I just got hungry and I decided to cook it. And I'm going, how can I not make it beautiful? We eat with our eyes that first. Is, that's awesome. And it, I don't know, it's just more appetizing, appetizing and pretty. What, what, and Adrian, what were you going to say? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just like putting the thing is that we eat with our eyes and then our nose. Oh, please, after being with you about the aroma, aromatherapy, it's eyes, nose, and then the mouth. And that's a beautiful takeaway from you. Eyes, that's my yeah. nose, and mouth. Let's remember that. That's a great thing to chat about. Eyes, nose, and mouth. Because yeah, no. a lot of people say we eat with our eyes first, but then there's a lot more that goes on. Yeah, very cool. So with the food art, what I realized is that it didn't happen overnight. <laughs> and what I, what I did my best to do, and I've been doing this for a while, like kind of figuring out the process or trying to summarize the process to share with people because I do it naturally, but it's like, hey, you can't do it all at once and you practice. So I think even before I kind of go into the process, I think one of the most important things that we need to know about plant-based food art, making our food beautiful, we eat with our eyes first, is that it does take practice. So just remember that. I mean, I'm just kind of not, you know, put that one down to the ground, but it does take practice and have fun with it and do it as much as you can. So for the food art essentials, we talked about some of these. The mindfulness, to me, that is the umbrella of so much of this. I mean, I'm literally standing here feet grounded, doing my best to be mindful. It's a little bit hard to be mindful and talk at the same time. I'm usually quiet and in myself, but being mindful when we're creating, being mindful at the farmer's market or even the grocery store, being mindful when you're choosing your veggies that you want to cook with and being mindful when you're creating the food art. So I think we have that one down. The next one is the different plates that I'll just grab some here. I have one there that's going to be a surprise, so I'm not going to show you that one yet. So different <laughs> bowls and different plates, different shapes and sizes. They could be round. They could be small. They could be black. I've mentioned before in Florida, when I was in Florida, my family has, they're on the water. They have blue plates and they have orange plates. So I used a lot of blue plates and orange plates while I was down there. I come back to Arizona and it's more green and earthy. So different, different kind of plates and bowls, different shapes and sizes. And what's kind of fun with that is to take the same dish and then plate it different ways with different bowls. The other thing that we talked about yesterday was leaving white space and not crowding. It looks like somebody's joining us with the iPhone and that's not Melanie. So I don't know who that might be. So <laughs> welcome iPhone. They could rename when they come in. So making sure we leave white space. And I mentioned yesterday, a lot of people that don't think about it, they crowd so much food. They go, oh, I'm just gonna crowd everything. But the white space is really what makes the food pop. Then we have, hmm, I didn't really talk about this. And I'm gonna be better. Yesterday, I was not quite grounded. I'm just gonna be totally perfectly honest with you. So today I'm more grounded, I'm more focused. I'm gonna be more practicing the Mise en Place a little bit better. And because I wanna demonstrate it. Yesterday was like, hey, it wasn't quite there at 100%. I would give myself probably about a C. Today, my goal is to do better, is to do better because when I'm by myself, I do practice it. But me, some plus, having everything really organized when we're cooking and preparing food. Oh, the other thing, these are essentials. This is how you can get started, are different herbs. So any kind of different herbs that you want to add to whatever you're preparing. Here we go again with this aromatherapy. This mint, as soon as I get near the mint, it's, it's amazing. So we have the mint, we have the basil. Oh my gosh, guys, you just have to like pick it up and touch it. Feel the essential oils in them, right? Yeah. Hmm. So before I move in, so that to me, that's phase one. Those are kind of like foundational for food art. So when people are just getting started, play around with those. Any comments? Is somebody in the, I, I see iPhone in the waiting room. I'm not sure if, if that is the real person or not, but any comments around that part of it or any questions about the foundation, the essentials of food art? Adrian, I always see your mouth going and not your microphone <laughs> or any comments in the chat. No, good. 
my body is very enthusiastic all the time. So I can, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to be quiet. No, and, you don't have to be quiet. Okay, so I Sally, love, I love yourself. your enthusiasm. Sally has, is talking about that. She is mindful. She's like really into mindfulness and that she's not thought about being mindful with food preparation. But what is she, perhaps <clears throat> this is part of the intuitiveness you're mentioning is about being mindful. Did I get that right, um, Sally? Yeah, Sally, do you want to add anything else? I, I want to hear you say it out loud because I just got goosebumps when Adrian even said that because that is so powerful. I was just in my mind reviewing what you were reviewing and you've mentioned mindfulness several times during the challenge and I'd never really given credence to being mindful in food preparation, even though in general in my life, I tend to focus and, and move towards being mindful in all areas. And then I thought, well, maybe my mindfulness in food preparation is coming from the intuitiveness. So I don't have to think about being mindful because it's just sort of presenting itself. So I actually put the two concepts together. Oh my gosh, Sally, that is so, that is so powerful. Integrating the mindfulness in intuitive creating with beautiful food all at the same time. Yeah. Adrian, I see you. What's your thought? Um, like, so thank you so much, Sally. That makes so much sense to me, which is sometimes mindfulness for me too, is too heady now that I can do intuition and just be in the flow is it's almost like I have to go up when somebody says, be mindful. It says, no, I'm in my whole body being intuitive. Thank you, Sally. I just never knew how to explain it. And you know, what's so interesting because when you said, and Adrian and Sally kind of bringing it together a little bit. You said you're in your head mindful. The word mind is mind, but we're talking about mindful in an intuition kind of way and we're feeling it. And yeah, we're all going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling it and coming from, I've never talked about this before. You know, when, you, when you're here by yourself, you're not thinking these things, but man, I'm getting the goosebumps through my, like the energy through my body. We've just figured something out. It's not mindfulness, our head. It's mindfulness in the flow, if we want to call it that. Or bodyfulness. I mean, I want to take mind uh, really out or put wholeness in some other thing rather than mind, wholeness, embodiment, wholeness, yeah. whatever. But we know what we're saying, right? Yeah. Maybe it's being present also. I've used that word in the past. It's being very present and very grounded. And oftentimes, like, I don't know how it would work here. Maybe we need to practice it before I try to share it here. Try, I say. In my cooking events, I have a singing, a Tibetan singing bowl, and I usually start my events with the singing <clears throat> bowl to be very grounded. I just didn't know how that sound would pick up. So maybe a few of us could see if it's going to work, but that helps. It's the grounding, being present when we're with it, not rushing through the process. And I think, uh, Melanie, you hit on a really important fact because you were mentioning earlier about the white space on a plate. And when I think, because we're, as you know, in Canadian Thanksgiving, and my grandmother loved preparation of Thanksgiving, but it wasn't so much the beauty, she focused on the taste. Do, do you know what I mean? That it was, uh, you know, the homemade pumpkin pie and the homemade dressings and things like that. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is that she loved cooking. But everybody did pile their plate because they just loved her food. So it wasn't a beautiful presentation once on the plate, but everybody wanted to dive into her, her food. Uh, so you've actually brought something into my awareness about the joy of not only how it looks and taking the time to make it look good, but it also made me think whenever I've been out for fine dining and I'm presented with something like the avocado tartare, it actually looks too beautiful to disturb the arrangement on the plate. So anyway, I just thought I would mention that, that um, historically in our family, it's not been, it's been, uh, I don't want to say it was always rushed, but the idea was to get it onto the table so we could enjoy the family time and the, and the meal. So you have actually brought into my mind about slowing down. Mm -hmm. So as you were saying yesterday, the process and even the dishes is all part of this thing. So you've actually brought a lot of things into my mind that I wasn't anticipating, Melanie. Oh my gosh, Sally. I really appreciate that because it's part of my life. 
And sometimes I do it naturally, but it's hard to articulate it. So you're actually helping me articulate some of these concepts in a different way, which I really love. The other thing I think about, you know, in the generations before us, how do I say this? Um, food was scarce at times. And when people got together for holidays, it was time to really just enjoy what was available and to celebrate together. So that's a whole nother part of it. I see somebody going with their headphones. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Hi, Marie. Now I know who you are. <laughs> Hi. Oh, is my name on up, up there? It says iPhone. It says we saw iPhone and we didn't know who it was. Oh, if it's if you want to rename Hi. yourself, you're welcome to, but you don't have oh. to. I don't yeah, really know how so to do that. Okay. Great conversation. So after we have like that's the essentials, the foundation. And then after you kind of feel comfortable with that, you can start layering in. Like I was thinking, like I think when I typed something up yesterday, I wrote steps, but it's not really steps. I realized it's phases or a process. This whole food art is not like step one, you have to do this. Step two, you have to do that. It's not that. It's more a process and phases. I actually just figured that out that yesterday, getting ready, like I said, like at two in the morning, coming here to be with y'all. So <laughs> but after that, we can add flowers. You know, we can, we can add, whoops, we can, we can add the beautiful flowers. And I'm pausing here because again, the aromatherapy of the flowers and flowers have different tastes. Like the marigolds are often a little bit spicy, a little bit peppery, and they're so beautiful. You wouldn't expect that. So I feel like some people, like we used flowers yesterday, we'll use them again today, but that's a whole nother way to kind of like elevate the art. So we have the essentials and then we can elevate with flowers. I'll give you another couple ideas here. We talked about this briefly. We can go horizontal, I said it wrong. We can go vertical with our food or we can go horizontal on a plate. That's thinking about it differently after you have some of the basics down. The thing that I mentioned yesterday a little bit when I was plating is the power of three. So we, I don't know, I've always heard, like even when you're doing fla like flowers, funny flowers, it's three, it's five, it's seven, it's odd numbers and some, some of you that might know more about art <laughs> than I do, but I've played with it. I actually tried to do a demo one time where I showed here it is with two, here it is with three. And there's not flow. Like you don't see the flow with those odd numbers, with the even numbers, but you see flow with odd numbers. So start with the power. I like to call that power, power of three. I've said this a few times is let it flow. So when you're creating your avocado tartare or your hummus or the goddess thing that we're going to be doing today, this is the next level. Let it flow. So again, guys, out of our head, into our heart, into our intuition, and just let the magic flow. There's no, <laughs> there's no right or wrong. It just works. I remember I was taking a culinary course. And we were, were learning how, I call it sauce and swirl. That's a whole nother thing. Sauce and swirl, how to put things on your plate. You know, you go to one of those nice restaurants and they sauce and swirl. That's what I call it. I literally was standing right over there in my kitchen by myself shaking the first time I was saucing and swirling. And I'm going, Melanie, you are out of your mind. It's just food and there's no perfect, it's like imperfect. There's no right way to do it. It's going to be beautiful every time. And if it's not, you just scrape it off and start over. I've done sauce and swirl with kids where I've given them different ideas with plates, like with the raspberry sauce and like talk about fun. I give them like, hey, you can do it this way. You could do that. And then they do it. And every single one is beautiful. These like six, seven, eight year old kids. So if the little kids could do it, we could do it. You could do it, right? <laughs> so sauce and swirl is a little bit more the other thing that I just want to mention about the Elevate the Art is drawing. And not a lot of people do this, but chefs do, especially when they're creating a new dish or they are working on a dish and want to do something a little bit different. And I can, I can show this to you sometime, definitely not today, but it's taking your ingredients and having the vision for your dish in your head and then drawing it out. 
So I'll, and I'll show you that, not today. <laughs> I only have an hour, a little over an hour, to, an hour, about an hour. Um, but draw, drawing out what's going to go there. So that's, and that's next level. I don't want to add too much at first because you're not going to start drawing it today or tomorrow, I don't think. I know I, it probably took me quite a while to start drawing. So that's it. So, yeah, I don't need to look at my notes, but that's it on like an elevate the art. Some of the basic things with elevating the art. So we start with the essentials. We elevate the art as we go through the phases. And then the last part I realized is creating your own signature dishes. So think about it. Yay, right? Yay, Adrian. I let me hold my thought, but what is your thought? <laughs> I I did just signature everything, whatever we're passionate about. Honestly, thank you so much. This is really fabulous. It's signature pose instruction, signature whatever Sally and we all do. You're is making me really? cry. How awesome. Well, you're making me go like this. It's powerful. I have goosebumps too. So thank you. I am getting goosebumps from you. I mean, it's just so amazing guys that we can be here on the computer. Like we know it, we're all in zoom meetings every day now, but the fact that we're like talking and sharing and getting ideas and giving each other goosebumps when we see beautiful food or we get this thing, <laughs> but really signature, like my avocado tartare, nobody calls it avocado tartare. It's my signature avocado tartare. <laughs> it's my signature sprout and spelt flatbread it's my signature roasted veggie bowl and you'll have it's my signature like sally was even asking me she goes are you going to be doing your signature raw carrot cake in the challenge and i wasn't because we're doing appetizers but hey there's always room for a raw carrot cake but that's my signature and it doesn't matter that i become known for it because i want to pass it on but the really cool thing is you can take my stuff and your own ways and your own food and your own plates and your own passions. Adrian, you're, you're getting me move. I know you move in your yoga. You're getting me moving today. You're getting the energy flowing over here in Arizona. <laughs> but yeah, creating your own signature. So what I see when people, guys, when people really focus on the art, the beauty of food, creating beautiful food, like you're saying, we eat with our eyes first and we, we get it in our senses and we get it in our mouth. And it really goes from the farm to the kitchen, to the table. And it's at the table where we're kind of doing the beauty and it's a process and it takes time. So that's what I have to say about Melanie's version of plant-based food art. <laughs> it was like, but I think it's a process. I would just love, we're at 28 after the hour. We're doing pretty good on time. Um, I would love right in the chat, something that maybe hit your heart. Maybe we say it that way. And then if anybody wants to share anything, that would be great. Kind of while we're pausing a moment and just letting this concept soak in because I honestly here, I'm, I'm kind of keep talking. I, a lot of us are, most of us are business people here. So business wise, I'll just tell you a lot of people, and I know this, and I'm not afraid to say it to anybody, even though we're business people, many of us are business here. A lot of people teach food. A lot of people can teach you how to shop and what to eat and all that nutrition stuff. Many people can teach you culinary that have way more practice and may more, way more training than I do on the culinary, but I know it pretty good. And I know the basics and I know what works and I know how to make it easy. But my specialty, my, you know, like some of us know my zone of genius, is creating it beautiful, creating the beautiful food. And as I've said before, and I just have to say it because I'm feeling it now, I'm feeling it in me and connecting with y'all. Marie, you're right there, right in the middle. I see you right there. <laughs> We've had beach walks in Cocoa Beach before. I, I, I get most excited when I see what other people are making. Like even Michael sent me pictures this morning of his avocado tartar. He, he was texting me when his wife was out grocery shopping yesterday saying, send me the recipe. I need the recipe. She's in the grocery store right now. And then this morning I woke up, he goes, look, 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 you know, this is, this is what we made. And then he said, now I'm going to take a picture with our guests. And he showed me him and his wife with their avocado, two avocado tartars and they look beautiful, <laughs> but I get more excited when I see what other people do. I'm just kind of like this intermediary thing. I feel like just passing along what I love to do every day every day guys. So yeah, I rambled a lot. Cause I'm just like, I am just so excited to be here and sharing my passion, but just any other ahas before we move into the goddess stuff. 
you guys have me going. You guys got all these light bulbs. We're really going to have to re-listen to this replay, I think. <laughs> I'm feeling right now when it's a little bit quiet, I'm feeling very grounded. It's a lot like yoga, like I said before, but I'm also feeling a lot of energy. And I think that's the really neat thing. And if you think, I've never said this out loud before either, y'all, you just have this going with me. The foods, guys, this is, <laughs> I can't even say it, I'm so excited. <laughs> I like it when I tickle my own self. I'm feeling like the groundedness. The food comes from the ground. And then we're creating this beautiful food and this beautiful art from our heart. And I'm just feeling the energy. No wonder I'm feeling the energy, right? <sighs> I need to ground myself before I get into the next piece of content. <laughs> so I think before I do the goddess, I just want to share with you very, very briefly what we have coming next. So Bez, if you could help me out and... Ooh, my ear set is doing something funny here. So Bez is going to share the screen. And hey, Betty, now I see you. <laughs> Sometimes different people are here and different people are there. So what I decided to do is we've had three days together. And I, of course, don't want this to end. I could do this with y'all every, every day. But what I've put together is a three-day event. And it is called... Farm to table, oop, there it goes. Farm to table food art experience. And I'm, guys, I'm so excited. Like for me to see this on the screen and to know that people that want to continue to learn more are going to join me and we're going to create beautiful food together. I am so excited. It's going to be October 20th to the 22nd. And we're literally going to spend three full days together, kind of doing what we're doing here, talking about the food, doing the shopping, talking about the food art and the culinary. And the really cool thing that we're gonna do in my mind is we're gonna go from the appetizers only in this challenge to creating the whole dinner party, the whole dinner. So, oh gosh, guys, that gave me chills. <laughs> that gave me chills. It sounds like, like guys, you can, we can, I, my brothers make fun of me because I make fun of myself, but I'm getting excited because I can see us together, whoever wants to join me, or if you have friends or family, whatever, creating appetizers and the entrees and the desserts and just doing that and then celebrating. That's what I see. So do you want to scroll up a little bit, Bez? Just, you know, you don't have to just kind of look, you know, it's creating, it's creating, it's the creating the dinner. We all know this. If you love to entertain, if you are passionate about cooking, if you're excited now, if you're kind of plant-based, if you love shopping at farmer's market, if you want to host that you. So Bez, if you could click on that bright button in the middle. It's kind of hard. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. So here's, here's what I've put together. It's three days. And like I said, we're going to, we're going to be together for three, three, oops, it's moving around three long days. We're going to have a private Facebook community. I'll have the recipe guides like we usually do. And you'll get the replays from this challenge. So that's what we'll have. But for the people that are here in the challenge, I put together a bonus this is part of what I was thinking about last night and actually typed this up last night at probably about two in the morning that for those of us that are here in the challenge, if you register by the 13th of the month, the week before we start, we're going to have a two hour cook along food art along together. So you'll just bring whatever you have and we're just going to have fun in the kitchen together. And that's it. So it's only $97 for the full three days. There is definitely an upgrade. You'll get everything you need. In with the, this entry level, like a general admission, if you want more, you'll get replays of the full event and you'll also get more time with me. So the website is, well, let me think. I'm so bad with websites, you guys. Food Art Fall, foodartfall.com. Yeah, food, there it is on the screen, foodartfall.com. So take a look. If it's for you, great. If it's not, that's okay. But I'm looking forward to going forward and together with, our plant-based friends, really international, creating dinner parties together with what we're doing. So that's, so that's what I have. Thanks, Biz.
food art fall. That's just go look there. And that's, and that's what it is. Thanks, Adrian. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. When I realized that we could go from appetizers to the whole dinner, I'm going, why not? Right? We only had three hours together. We're going to have three full days together for whoever wants to come. So that's that. So now let's get, we have 25 minutes and I'm going to tell you the secret. I sent this note to Michael last night. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to end on the top of the hour. We shall see, like do my very best. But here's the cool thing. The videos from the last two days all went one hour and 11 minutes. <laughs> you can't, guys, go to the YouTube, one hour and 11 minutes, both of them without even trying. So now I decided my one hour programs are always going to be one hour and about 11 minutes. That's what I'm going to advertise them as because for some reason I can't just do an hour and I need 11 more minutes. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> So let's, if you print it out, if you print it out your handout, I'm going to get right into the green goddess dressing first. And then if we have more time, I'll teach you how to make a little salad dressing. So with the dressing, let's go through the ingredients. Avocados. You know what? If we want, we can switch the camera over here. We've had me on the screen too much already <laughs> today. <laughs> Hang on. Oop. Well, I'll do it this way then. Avocados, ripe, soft avocados. Again, I, I say this almost every time I do something with avocados is that I love to buy them green and then let them ripen on the counter. And then Sally, I know you said you were trying to ripen yours. I meant, I think I sent you a private message. What you can do is put them in a bag with a banana and that speeds the ripening. And then when they get to your right level of softness, then you put it in the refrigerator and they kind of stop. But we still like... I still have to like, I like go, oh my gosh, I just hope it's going to be right. You know, and if it's not, it's not that big a deal. So we have avocados, we have fresh herbs, any kind of fresh herbs. We kind of went through the herbs earlier, any kind of fresh herbs that are available. I was just thinking right now when I said that dill would be awesome. So if you guys have access to dill, 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 dill in a goddess dressing would be really incredible. I just haven't seen dill lately. And then we have some citrus. So I actually went and bought some more citrus today because those lemons that I had <laughs> this week were really hard and I could never get them so I could never get them softened up. So I got some lemons and limes. So with the citrus, you could use lemons and or limes, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of sea salt, always a little bit of sea salt. We talked about salad dressings, acid, fat, and salt. So acid, the citrus, fat is going to be the olive oil and salt. That's always going to be the base. Oh, and also fat is the avocado. So that's it. And then we add the herbs. So I think what we'll do is get our ingredients ready for the goddess. And then we're gonna chop the veggies and make a salad. Des, can you do the overhead? Is that not working? And remember, there's always a damp paper towel underneath your cutting board so it doesn't move. <laughs> yeah, is that going okay? Do you see the overhead should be spotlighted? Do you see that? If, can you guys see it? I can't, but that's okay. Yes, we we can. Oh, see good. It. Isn't that weird? It's not doing that for me. But I don't. I know what I'm. I, just as long as you you guys can let me know if there's a problem. So we have. You know what? I'm going to do the garlic first. <sighs> Here we're going again. Aromatherapy. Aromatherapy. Garlic easy to do. Okay. Oh my gosh. Got these from the farmer this week. Ah, guys always. Oh, that's a little bruised, but that's okay. So always enjoy the aromatherapy. I cannot say that more than enough. Yum. I, I don't know if you guys don't like garlic, I would say start liking it because it really adds a nice flavor and it's great. So we have our garlic. There's garlic and yeah, I, I'm kind of looking at this because some things are a little bit more messy than others. So I'm trying to say, what do I want to cut where I'm not going to mess things up too much to keep the cutting board kind of halfway clean. So we'll just cut into this avocado. I don't, I can't, again, I can't see it on my screen, but that's okay. So, but if you can, I'm holding my fingers around the avocado, slicing it. 
And this is when we go, oh, is it going to be good? Twist it a little bit. Woo! <laughs> and there it is. So I'm actually going to, we'll just put that there for now. We're going to make a big batch because we might need it. Another soft avocado. Again, fingers around the edge. So your knife will never cut you. Twist it. Not bad, guys. Like the kids would say, Aunt Melanie did pretty good on her avocados. <laughs> oh, and then I think I showed you this yesterday. Hand behind the back. I learned this in one of my culinary classes. And twist it. Wow. These definitely came from two different places. Ooh, hand behind. You really don't want to cut yourself with a sharp knife or any kind of knife. So that did not quite come out, but that's okay. There we go. There we have our avocados. We have our garlic. I'll get some lemon. So I like to roll the lemon a little bit to break down the membranes in the lemon so that when we squeeze it, and these are much softer than they were the other day. There. I'm just looking, I think one lemon, depending upon how, how, how sweet it is, how juicy it is, we may only need one. So we'll get that ready. And guys, I told you, I lost my reamer. I think it just went in the compost thing one day and it ended up getting thrown away. So I'm gonna go and get another reamer so I can show you guys how, how much better it is to have a reamer, or how to, much better it is to have a reamer than not. Just do our best to squeeze this through that little bowl. There are a lot of seeds in the lemons these days for some reason. Sometimes there are and sometimes there aren't. And I'll tell you, if you, I know in Florida, our neighbors in, in Cocoa Beach have a lemon tree. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. And I used to have a Meyer lemon tree. Meyer lemons are a little bit sweeter. So when I use a Meyer lemon in cooking where I'm looking for acid, I also use other lemon as well. So there's, I'll do both. This is smelling really good too. I forgot to zest, but that's okay. I'm still getting the aromatherapy benefit. So if you want, you can zest your lemon. The other thing is that I put some limes here. You could also use lime in this dressing if you have lime. All right, there is our lemon juice. So we have our avocado, our lemon juice, olive oil, and herbs. So man, this is, guys, this is gonna be pretty easy. So with this, I decided to use a blender. I know yesterday Sally was asking about blender versus food processor. In general, a blender is going to, um, I, don't, I can't think of the right word, like more smooth than saucy. So that's why I'm using it. We want this pretty smooth. So we're gonna put the avocados in, yum. Guys, I can't tell you how many avocados I've eaten this week. I know we were talking about brain health. I think we're all getting a little, whoops, a little dip of brain health this week. Yeah, you should really pay attention when you're doing this instead of trying to watch your faces. <laughs> I'm going, I want to see you and you're watching me and I'm dropping things all over the place. So this is actually a lot of fun to do when you're working with kids and just let them squeeze the avocado out. All right, I'm a little messy, but hey, we'll take care of it. This is a really nice avocado, guys. So seriously, I know sometimes people say, oh, my avocados are never a good ripeness because they buy them when they're already soft. So as I'm doing this, any questions or comments about what we're doing right now? Adrian? <laughs> well, actually, I love this because Stephanie, Seth, yes, yes, said, um, why are you not scooping and you why are you squeezing, not scooping the avocado? <laughs> of course she would ask. This is really funny in my mind. And I, I'll give you two answers. One is I've done so many classes with kids and that's how, when I first started teaching it, <laughs> we were always doing it with our hands because it was so much fun with the kids. And then the other thing, Honestly, it's more mindful. Like it is so mindful and so much fun. It kind of gets back to like play a little bit, doing it with our hands. That's the only reason, no big deal. If you want to, like I've been in classes where people say you need to scoop it with a spoon and you can do that. 
But if you want to be close to the food, do it this way. That's all. No biggie. Hey, Steph, <laughs> good to see you. I didn't know you were here. We're going to put the garlic in. Any other questions? I Adrian? Do have, I, I do have a comment. Yes, please. Um, I could eat avocados all day long and uh, whether they're made into guacamole or put a little salt on them, put them on a toast. I love avocados. I'm with you. You know, I did, I did a, a Facebook, not a Facebook, a YouTube video one time and everybody was into avocado toast. Like they still are. And I went, here's, it's not avocado toast. It's avocado tartar. Uh -huh. It's like, here's something, here's something better, better than avocado toast, avocado tartar. All right. All right. One more question. Sally wants to know, uh, garlic versus garlic press, cutting the garlic or garlic press. Oh my gosh. S Sally, you and I grew up in the same era because I have my grandmother's garlic press here. And sometimes I use it and I love it. You could do it either way. I will tell you something that I learned from Dr. Andrew Weil when I worked with him. And of course you can read about it in his writings as well, is that like, it didn't sit out here a long time, but for garlic to get the anti-inflammatory properties going, it needs to sit out and oxidize a little bit with the air. And then it, the um, anti-inflammatory, whatever it is. I know you're, you're a doctor, you know how to pronounce some of those words that I can't pronounce. Um, it's more bioavailable for anti-inflammatory. Anti Good question. Guys, I'm putting mint in here. I have never put mint in an avocado tartar. This is an avocado tartar in a green goddess, but that's what we have. So, oh my gosh, guys, I'm into mint this week. So mint and basil. So what I'm doing here, I don't know if you can totally see, see my little, little teeny mint plant here. I'm taking some of the bigger leaves off so that if I need any of the smaller leaves, if there are any left for the food art part of it, I'll have those left. So that's kind of what I'm doing. All right. So we have, I always like to go back to the recipe to make sure you guys have it. So we have the avocado, avocado, herbs, garlic, lemon juice, olive oil, sea salt. Hmm. And I have olive oil here, here. Who knows? We might decide to add some olive oil because I love olive oil. So I just accidentally cut that and that's really pretty. So I'm just gonna save it for now. All right, let us blend this up a little bit. Clean up a little bit. A while back I bought a beautiful green blender. So that's not doing that much yet. So I am going to add a little olive oil, but oh my goodness. So like I said, I can't see the camera. Can y'all see that? Look how good it looks already. Maybe I'm just putting olive oil because I love olive oil. <laughs> like not just like olive oil, love olive oil. <laughs> wow. I thought it wasn't blending, but it was actually blending quite well. So we're just going to, this is your dressing. This is a green goddess dressing. All right, any comments? I, I saw something come up, hang on. Hang on. It, it's not getting very smooth, but that's okay. So I've done classes before with kids and oh, you know what? Here's what I love about cooking and food. It's perfect just the way it is, right? this looks so good you guys oh, looks good and smells good I can't wait to see what y'all come up with and what kind of unique combinations you have this is seriously so fresh like the freshness the freshness and the mint and I'm actually smelling some lemon that's kind of what's going on here wow if you want, you could get a little bit smoother, but I, I'm keeping it chunky for some reason that just kind of happened and that's what's going on here. I can't wait to eat this today. So I don't know if any of you made your pesto yet and your hummus, 
The pesto that I made yesterday was one of the best pestos I've ever had in my life. So do it. It's been a long time since I made pesto. So make sure you do that. So while I'm finishing up this, just kind of getting the avocado into this little bowl, I know that I told everybody that was coming to the challenge that when I had to change the date, you could have like a 15 minute one-on-one -on -one with me. So if you could put in the chat your name and a 15, we know who I need to reach out to because I'm not gonna remember. So if you want a 15 with me and a one-on-one -on -one to do a little bit of food art, we'll do a little Zoom, a little private Zoom with, with you. All right. Oh my gosh, guys. I think that's good enough. All right. So there we have our dressing. <laughs> Honestly, guys, it is so much fun to do this. I hope you all have as much fun or more fun than I do. I had that bowl there, but that's going to be for the veggies. So there we have our dressing. Any comments on the dressing? How did that feel for you just watching? Okay. It reminds me of um, when you're making that avocado. Right, Des, I can barely hear you. It, when you're you were just putting olive oil with the uh, avocados, it reminded me of a something called awesome sauce, and I can't remember the ingredients, but it looks amazing. Awesome sauce. Yes, I had it once, and it I'm was. I'm trying olive to remember. There's a restaurant that I used to go to. I lived in Berkeley for a little while and there was a restaurant that I used to go to and they had really cool names of dishes at that restaurant. I have their book. I can't remember the name of it right now, but awesome sauce sounds like something that they did. So different than what we have been doing, I'm cutting these veggie. Oh my gosh, you guys, here's this watermelon radish again. I'm cutting in small pieces, like small little pieces so that when we bite into it, it's just a little, like you can chew it easily rather than what we've been doing the last couple of days where we're doing things that are a little bit more like dipping. These we're just, we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat it like a salad. And I know yesterday, I think it was yesterday, somebody was asking about taking off skin and all that kind of stuff. I never take the skin off because it's organic. I mean, if it's skin that you can't eat, <laughs> I'll take it off, but yeah, you don't need to take the skin off. Yeah, so we're gonna... Yeah. All right. I'm not doing a good job of this cutting here right now because I was looking up instead of looking down. And that's not a good thing to do when you have a sharp knife in your hand. Just a little tip. Knock on wood. I've never cut myself by doing that, but I should pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Watch your fingers. Whoever said that, thank you. Isn't that something that your parents would tell you? Watch your fingers. All right. So there we have watermelon radish little teeny pieces. Guys, you know, whenever I do this, it's like thinking about going to a really nice upscale plant-based vegan restaurant and paying for like a $30 salad or something, or, I mean, and you can do it right at home. So we're going to cut the beans in little pieces. Yum. Wow. All of this I got at the farmer's market yesterday, guys. So Everything I have here, well, the green, the green tomatoes I already have, but that was from a farmer's market. But everything here is local Arizona right now. It, kind of amazing that in the hot summer they can still grow, but they know what they're doing. <laughs> All right. Beans, what else? These beautiful little radishes, the other radishes that we had, the Golden radishes, we'll put those in little pieces. Radish, like I said, radish season here. Radish, radish, radish. I'm kind of getting used to radishes. Like I've said before, I'm not a big fan of radishes, but I think when they are just harvested and then you buy them the next day, they taste pretty good. The other thing that I like to do, that I like to do when I'm cutting, doing the best I can, is putting the veggies flat. So it's flat rather than rolling around. And then it's easy, it's easier to cut. All right, there's that. Radish. What else do we have? Peppers. Wow. Guys, these little peppers, I'm in love with them right now. Thank you, Farmer Mark. <laughs> so Mark, Mark's an old hippie and he's from Oregon, but he learned how to farm out here in Arizona. 
he was in Oregon last week. You know, we know everything from Facebook, but he was back to this farm this weekend. So that's what I've talked about, you know, getting to know your farmers, going to visit them. You know, it's one thing going to the farmer's market and spending time with them, but it's another thing going to their farm and seeing what they really do. It's fun. And then you do cooking events at their farms and it's even more fun. All right. How's, how's everybody doing? Any questions, comments? Which farmer's market did you go to? Yesterday? Uptown or downtown? Yeah. yeah he, what was that? Uptown or downtown? Neither. <laughs> oh, okay. So here, yeah, great question. So here in Phoenix, we probably, well, I have to watch. Here in Phoenix, we probably have about eight, eight different farmer's markets that are going on on the weekend. And sometimes different farmers are at different markets and sometimes the same farmers are at a couple of markets. God, that was a silly thing. But anyway, there are farmers everywhere. And I'm really liking the Gilbert market right now, Gilbert, Arizona. It's, it took me like almost 30 minutes to get there. But the reason I'm liking it yeah. is that there are about five farmers. They're all lined up in a row. And then, okay. yeah. And then what I do, I peruse the market. I kind of look and see who has what. And then I buy a little bit from everybody. And okay. Then, and then I take my stuff. Oh, this is like what Melanie does. And then I take my stuff to the car and then I go back and I take photos. <laughs> so that's kind of my, my farmer's market and some onions. Oh God. Oh, I have to testify. These are not, the onions are not local. They came from the grocery store. Okay. I just cut that to make it easier. Yeah. Again, the aromatherapy. The thing that I was also thinking when I was thinking about today, thinking and thinking, thinking, whatever, sounds like a crazy thing, uh, is that I think what I'm showing you this week is how you can use similar veggies in multiple different ways. And I think that's a good thing too. So you aren't going to get bored. So we have watermelon radish. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's going to happen. And I also, water, watermelon radish, beans, the cucumbers, we need some cucumbers. Guys, I have to hold these up for you. Armenian cucumbers, absolutely incredible. And I think I may have mentioned this yesterday, but I definitely thank the farmer for growing the cucumbers and harvesting them before they get too tough. There are some farmers that grow them so tough, they're so watery, they don't taste very good. <laughs> oh. But oh, this is another smell that's really nice, cucumbers. And oddly enough, it reminds me of my childhood because we used to always have cucumbers growing in our garden. We grew up in Pennsylvania and we always had, I probably shouldn't even say this, but this just thought came to mind. My dad had a friend who would dump like a truckload of manure. Sally, you probably know what I'm talking about. A truckload of manure in the garden. And we always had the best food. <laughs> and, and then my grandmother, his mom, would compost. And she, this is kind of silly, but I'm, I'm telling you. She always had the best worms. Like she always had literally the best worms, like the best worms. And we lived on the water on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland at that time. And I thought she was like composting. So we would have really good worms for fishing. <laughs> I realized later that they were for the garden, you know, to take the nutrients around. So there, there we have our veggies. How's that? And we have our sauce. We don't need this bowl. I was going to put everything in there. Yes, I will anyway. So guys, how is that? Thumbs up, good, easy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put all the veggies into the bowl. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Just to mix them around and to enjoy. This is actually kind of fun. This is like, you could do this with, like we could pretend we're kids and do this, but this is fun. Just kind of mix out around the beauty. Wow, guys. This is like, you have to be so mindful in that other way, like really paying attention mindful when you're cutting. But now that the cutting is done, and I'm just, again, smelling the aromatherapy, enjoying the beauty of the food. 
this is Adrian, this like becomes yoga. Like this, I'm like really, it's this is part of yoga. So there, there we have it. We have our our goddess dressing and we have our salad. Whew, so I'm gonna show you this two different ways. Oh my goodness. I could not wait to show you all this plate. That's why I didn't show it to you before. Y'all are gonna have to tell me if that's in a good spot, yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Move these move these papers. Good spot. Nothing distracting. Looking good. Nothing distracting. Good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, team. <sighs> oh, Steph has to leave, but Steph, come and watch the end of the replay. Thank you for being here. <sighs> Guys. This is like a salad that you would pay a lot of money for in a restaurant, I think. And if they do local farmers, it will be incredible. So I don't know if you saw, this is a bowl. Can you see that, how it is? Yes. It's a bowl that kind of goes down. And then I'm going to literally just put the veggies on top. It's so good. Just add in a little, few dollops here and there. Whatever that word means, dollops. They always talk about dollops of food. And you don't have to do the dollops, but I just kind of felt like doing that in that moment. And we're going to add... Do you know what we're going to do? We haven't talked about flowers that much yet in terms of... Well, we did it yesterday. But we're just going to use... The marigold here. Whew. Marigolds are a little bit spicy. Put that there. I just keep coming back to the mint, you guys. So I'm going to get a little bit of mint. Yeah. Just the whole thing that I just mentioned about the flow, just kind of letting it flow. Like here, this is what happens. This is what happens. You'll go, is it mint? Is it the marigold? What do I want? Or then you see a piece of veggie. You go, or is it an onion? That doesn't. So here's what I say. Like you put it there, it doesn't look good. You put this there, that doesn't, to me, that doesn't really work. But this is what you could also do. You could put your food down and just say, hey, does that look good? But maybe if I cut the top of this cucumber, will that do it? No. I think we need more of this um, fresh. So I'm going to grab another flower. I don't know if we're going to use it all, but we're just going to add a little bit more. Guys, have fun doing this. Oh, that was nice. And then really, you know when to stop. So again, I don't see, is that in a good spot? Yes, it is, Melanie. Thank you. There it is, this way. And I'll do my photos. Looking good. All right. I'm going to do I have time. Wait, it's four minutes after there. I want to show you another way that you can do this. So I still have some veggies and I'm going to put the dressing, most of the dressing in the veggies. This kind of becomes like the avocado tartare, but it's going to have more um more flavor because it has all those herbs and then my favorite green bowl we're gonna, I'm gonna move this out of the way all right again y'all are just gonna have to help me here and let me know if you can see it and we're gonna kind of do a little bit of what we did the other day. And I'm gonna put some herbs on the bottom of the plate. We have some thyme over here also. Oh, aromatherapy, guys. <laughs> A little bit of thyme. And, and then some of the 
goddess dressing mixed up with the salad. And then some more time, kind of just quick and easy. That's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I have to move that one a little bit. My fingers are a little bit um, sticky with, with food right now. So it's not, that did not look good. I, I said whatever, but that was not a good one for me. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit more mindful. Yeah, and a little bit more. So I think the point of this right now is that you can use all kinds of herbs, whatever you have available. And, you know, when I first started doing this, I'm going, oh, and that, that's just too much. That didn't work. Here's the thing. If it doesn't work, just stop. But it needs something. So what does it need? Thunder. It needs a pop of color. So let's see. Hang on. Sorry about this. I moved everything out of the way. Does it need a little bit of that? Maybe a little bit of radish, a little bit of radish, a little bit of cucumber, a little, little bit of radish. No, that's too much. But I am going to add some of these purple flowers over here. This is when the intuitiveness really starts coming together. You just kind of look at what you have and you go, oh, what do I want to put there? This flower, this, this purple flower right there. And something that looked kind of hodgepodge when I got started, I think ends, ends up looking okay. So like, I, like seriously, I do this every day and I'm like, I'm looking at the clock and I'm trying to rush, totally not mindful. I was not mindful. I'm just telling y'all, I was not mindful in that moment. It still looks good. And then you just kind of look at it and you kind of bring things over and you say, hey, Let's experiment. So here we have it. Let me show you these two different bowls. Whew. There. Wow. Oh, all right, guys. It's seven minutes after the hour. I would love to hear what your action is. Like who has an action that you'd like to share based on what we talked about today? I know we had a lot of incredible conversation when we first got started. But who would like to share an action? Write your action down in the chat so we can kind of see. But who would like to share out loud? I already have to go back to the farmer's market now. Yay, right? Sally, what do you think you want to get? Or are you just going to go and have an intuitive time? actually think I would do that exactly what you've suggested not go with a plan just see what's there and bring whatever I get home and be creative like uh, like you've done but I also need to stock up on avocados I don't have nearly enough in my house right now yeah I know how that is so I love that you said that and that's part of the reason I was a little bit vague in the recipe today when I gave you all the ingredients for the salad dressing for the goddess dressing, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really give you the ingredients for the salad part because I really didn't know until I got to the farmer's market yesterday morning. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We know where we've learned that before. It really doesn't matter what kind of veggies you use. Just whatever veggies are there, chop them up, make a dressing and make a salad. So there's another food saying that I really love. And I learned this from Alice Waters in Berkeley, who really was the person that brought farm to table to the United States. And she has Chez Panisse restaurant out there and started the edible schoolyard where I used to hang out after I worked. I had a marketing client. I was out there doing marketing and she, I learned from her. I don't know where she quite got it, but what grows together goes together. What grows together goes together. So whatever is in season, what's growing, they go together and you can mix and match. So that's a whole nother way of thinking about it. But yes, Sally, I love that for an action. Take some photos. Of, I know you will and share with us. Yeah, anything else? Companion veggies. There you go, Sally. Anybody else have an action that you'd like to share out loud with us before some of us go watch football? Arizona Colors start in 15 minutes. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, well I, I will. I This is an embarrassment is that I have a farmer's market that comes to my neighborhood, which is one and a half blocks away from me on Friday mornings. And I used to be faithful and I have let that lapse. So my action is to put that in my watch and to remember every Friday. Wow. Friday morning close to your house in New York City. Yeah. That's incredible. Lucky you. I took, like I said, it was like 26 minutes. It took me like 30 minutes to get to the one yesterday morning. Yeah. Anybody else have an action? I love the farmer's market theme, even this time of year. Guys, if anybody else have anything, I just want to say thank you so much. We are like at 110. So we're going to end at one or well, here at 11 minutes after the hour because that's gonna be our new magic mark. I wanna thank you, it is, honestly, it's been so much fun being here. I'm kind of getting back into the rhythm. I thank you so much. I'm getting goosebumps just being here with you all. Um, some of you I've known for decades, some of you I haven't known that long, but I appreciate you and thank you for being here with me. And if you wanna come in another couple of weeks for the big three day, do that. And otherwise I know I'll be seeing you. I'm going to be sharing more because I'm getting back into the rhythm again. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks so much. I'll just hold these up as we kind of wind out. I wish we had music playing. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Biz. Thanks. Who else is still here? Adrian. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.